the government. Okay, but wait, wait. Who's providing the warehouse? Who put this together? This is a warehouse. It's all, you know, when you put your clothes away, it's not one of those where they're air conditioning. No, I understand. But is it owned by somebody who provides this housing to people who need it? No. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. He may in, unintentionally, but the government's not going along with that because they're not. Uh, no, you're, you're not answering me, though. Is this someone who owns the warehouse who's renting out space to people who don't have anywhere to sleep? He's helping them, but he says he's not. He says he doesn't know. But he's basically, like every other capitalist, making a buck. But does he own the building? Yes. He, well, right now that's about to be repossessed. I'm, I'm really sitting on edge to see what happens to me next. I really yeah. need All right. I, I, I hear you. So an individual who owns a warehouse is renting out space uh, under, the, under the table to poor people like that. That's interesting. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Uh, when we come back, we'll play some other things and get onto other topics. Uh, this issue will not go away unless we talk more about it. How would you solve the homeless infestation in America's cities? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. Go ahead. You cannot deport 11 million. Go ahead. You cannot deport 11 million people. You cannot deport a 1900 Go ahead. You cannot deny citizenship to children. Sit down, please. You weren't called. Go. So that's Donald Trump tossing out the uh, the ho the activist for illegal aliens who wants to uh, be the king of the illegal aliens, George Ramos, whose daughter works for the Hillary Clinton campaign, by the way, throwing him out because he wouldn't shut up and he got out of line. And he says, "Go back to Univision." Uh, it's an interesting thing that Trump is willing to stand up to these bullies. He stood up to the uh, blonde bully on Fox News. She then took a 10-day uh, uh, leave of absence because she knew she was going to crash Fox News if she came on. They were hit with so many millions of people who were so dissatisfied with her, uh, her obvious partisanship and working for the liberal uh, side that she took a 10-day, uh, as I say, uh, uh, hiatus. Now, George Ramos gets up and tries to stop Trump, and Trump puts him down. I mean, puts him in his place, puts him where he belongs. And then later on, uh, in clip two, Trump explains why he threw Ramos out. Let's hear clip two. I don't know really much about him. Uh, I don't believe I've ever met him, except he started screaming, and I would I didn't escort him out. Uh, you'll have to talk to security, whoever security has escorted him out. But certainly he was not chosen. I chose you. I chose other people to answer me where you're asking me questions. Uh, he just stands up and starts screaming. So, you know, maybe he's at fault also. But I don't consider that. I mean, somebody walked him out. I don't even know where he is. I don't mind if he comes back, frankly. All right. So then Ramos comes back. The bully from the uh, illegal alien mobs comes back and starts screaming in clip three again. Let's hear three. You cannot deny citizenship to the children. Again, the children. You that cannot build a Why do you say that? Well, a lot of people think, no, 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 excuse me, a, a lot of people, no, no, but a lot of people think that's not right, that an act of Congress can do it. Okay, and then in clip four, we hear what this is about, the birthright hotels, the birth hotels, birth tourism, coming over the border nine months pregnant, every uh, nine, 90 seconds another a baby is born here who's not a citizen of a citizen mother. Listen to clip four. A woman is getting ready to have a baby. She crosses the border for one day, has the baby all of a sudden for the next 80 years, hopefully longer. But for the next 80 years, we have to take care of the people. I don't think this. No, no, no. I, I don't think so. Excuse me. Some of the greatest legal scholars, and I know some of the television scholars agree with you, but some of the great legal scholars <laughs> agree that that's not true. That if you come across. Excuse me. Yeah, just one second. No, no, I am answering. So Ramos, the noble, the uh, very, very brave Mr. Ramos, who doesn't stand up to his own corrupt government, where crime is rampant, 
uh, doesn't stand up to the corruption of Mexico, comes here and tries to bully his way onto the stage of Donald Trump, instead gets pounded into sand because he had no basis for his bullying. And he then pushes in clip five about the wall, which you have to hear this one on The Savage Show. Let's listen to five. Okay. So, so the question is, uh, how are you going to build a 1900 miles wall? But very easy. I'm a builder. Well, That's easy. I build buildings that are 94. Can I tell you what's more complicated? What's more complicated is building a building that's 95 stories tall. <laughs> God. Yeah, no, wall is very easy to build. It's been built. Walls have been built since the beginning of time. Every sane nation has built walls to keep out people they don't want in their community. I mean, let's be clear. And let's be very clear. Towns had walls. Forts had walls. Cities had walls. China had a wall to keep out the Mongols. And America needs a wall. There's no question about it. Now you say, well, there's something wrong with the wall. Well, no, only if you believe in open borders, but we can see how that's worked out so far. Take a look at what's going on in Europe with their, with their no borders policy because of the EU socialist vermin that are destroying the, the European Union, flooding them with people that will never, ever assimilate. The crime waves are out of control in Europe. They're going bankrupt because of the illegal aliens. But let's look at the wall itself. It's a very important story, and I've talked about it. Remember when Israel was being subjected to the plague of Palestinian terrorism, when bombs were going off in cafes, buses were being blown up with Jewish children on them. Israel decided to build a wall. The liberals screamed, you can't build a wall. It's racist to build a wall. Israel built a wall. You can't build a wall. It's racist to keep the Palestinians out. Israel built a wall. Have you seen any suicide bombings in Israel recently? No. Why? Walls work. That's simple. Walls work. Don't listen to the college professors. They don't work. They don't know what does. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. The one thing we're going to start with immediately are the gangs and the real bad ones. And you do agree there are some bad ones. Do you agree with that or do you think everyone's just perfect? No, 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 I'd, I'd ask you a question. Do you agree with that? We have tremendous crime. We have tremendous problems. This, I, can't, I can't deal with this. Listen, we have tremendous crime. We have tremendously, we have some very bad ones. And I think you would agree with that, right? Okay, there are a lot of bad ones, real bad ones. All right, so you got Jorge Ramos, the leader of the uh, illegal alien brigades, to admit that there are gangs in the country. Now, how many years have you heard me telling you that uh, about 25 to 30 percent of all our prisoners are illegal aliens who shouldn't have been in this country to begin with, who've committed very bad crimes and finally got caught? Ever since I began a radio, 94, I've been warning you about this crime issue amongst the illegal aliens, and thankfully... Uh, Donald Trump has either read my books or one of his advisors. Uh, you would think after all the books, someone's reading them. I mean, if they sell hundreds of thousands each one, someone reads them. Or his advisors extracted this from them. The facts speak for themselves. Borders, language, culture speaks for itself. No sane nation on earth dissolves its borders. No sane nation on earth takes care of the other nation's problems especially when it's a basket case itself. We have our own problems to take care of, including the homeless issue, which we are talking about on the show today. And uh, what triggered this today on the Savage pr uh, program is the fact that there are pictures now, finally, of the bums in the streets of San Francisco so brazen, so out of control, that they are openly defecating in front of tourists in the street. I don't mean in an alleyway. That would be bad enough. That would be a public health issue unto itself, by the way. Has anyone thought about the public health implications of uh, armies of bums who are defecating and urinating in streets? Has anyone thought about what this means from a public health point of view? Are those who are robbing the Treasury immune to the stink? Are those who are robbing the Treasury or are allegedly running the country immune to what is going on to the streets of uh, America? I don't know. What world do they live in? Do they not have children? Do they not have grandchildren? Do they not understand that their policies are failures? No. The answer is their greed is so great that they are blinded by their lust for money. They're so blinded by their lust for raping as much money out of the treasury that they could care less if a bum is crapping in the street or urinating. All they know is that it keeps you off their back. 
All they know is that, thank God, Savage is talking about that instead of steering contracts to a husband or a wife in the Senate or Congress. Thank God they're focusing on the bums in the street, which tells you exactly why they keep them in our face. They are the armies of the politicians, as are the illegal aliens, the armies of the politicians. And that is how corruption brings a nation to its knees. If you care to comment on any of these topics, we're open for business at 855-400-7282. But I'm looking for solutions. What are the solutions to the issues? It's bad enough to talk about it, but what would you do about it? Kevin on WMAL, line one, go ahead, please. You're up on the Savage Nation. Thank you, Dr. Savage. I have a two-part solution. The first part of the solution would be to, there's 25% of illegal aliens that are in the prisons ship back to their home nations. And I'm, what I mean by ship back is put them on a C-10 or C-15, put a parachute on them and give them five days worth of rations. Well, you no, no, hold it. Now, we, we, cannot, we cannot talk about throwing people out of airplanes. There are buses that used to be used for deportation. They are no longer running. I live in San Francisco. I've gone past the Department of Homeland Security. I've seen the deportation buses with bars on the windows. They have stopped running south. I guess they're waiting to use the buses to deport the conservatives that remain in the city to Alcatraz. WBAP Dallas. Mary, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Um, I just wanted to say I spent 20 years at the VA hospital in Oklahoma City, and we had a huge population of uh, mentally ill people. And unfortunately, a lot of it was drug-related. Um, and some of those veterans receive forty, fifty thousand tax free dollars a year and, you know, come into the methadone program, get their psychiatric drug, are very addicted to drugs and are homeless. So I called regional office, I was like, What can we do? We're giving them these mentally ill people fifty thousand tax free dollars a year and they're homeless. And so um, we decided, you know, I did a rate of recidivism when they came in and the ones that just kept coming in after they spent their money and the ones that would go to, like, St. Anthony's Hospital and they would call us for a transfer because they were a service-connected veteran, you know, so we paid that bill, the ambulance bill, so on and so forth. We would assign a fiduciary, and that fiduciary would get 5% of their income to manage their money. And, uh -huh. you know, By the way, how much, how much was the ambulance? What's an ambulance charge? Because I know that this is one of the greatest uh, pieces of the crime wave and one of the greatest costs in our medical care are the scam artists who run the ambulances. You know how much money is made in that? Sometimes $2,500 per one transfer, and I can tell you. Bingo. People don't know this. I was told about this by a doctor who warned me not to talk about it on the radio. He was afraid. He said, don't mention my name. Uh, but there's a certain subgroup of immigrants in America who run the ambulance services. They've taken them over. But keep going now. Maybe we'll get to the bottom of how to solve the problem if we expose the problem itself. There are billions of dollars being made off the, quote, homeless problem. Billions of dollars being made off the illegal alien problem, which is why they're not solved. That's what, what you're saying and what I'm saying, right? Yes, exactly. And when you give them drugs, when you enroll them in a methadone program to get them off of their heroin, which is basically synthetic heroin, and then you turn around, you know they're in this program, why would you give these people who spend every dime, why would you give them money to buy drugs? We're well, keeping them addicted. Well, let's start with the drug issue. Methadone is more addictive than heroin, isn't that correct? That's my understanding, yes. That's my understanding. The drug methadone was invented to take people off heroin. Everyone in the business knows it's more addictive than heroin. It's harder to kick. But if you go back to heroin itself, did you know that heroin was synthesized as a cure for morphine addiction? You see, in the 1890s, 1900 era, morphine was very popular, uh, popularly used in the West, and it was legal. And so many people became addicted to morphine that they came up with a synthetic version of morphine called 3,6-diacetyl morphine. They added two molecules to the morphine structure, and they created a synthetic morphine called heroin. Thinking it was the miracle cure, heroin became more addictive, as you know, than morphine. Now methadone is a, is a pure synthetic, and that's far more, more addictive than heroin. So the pharmaceutical industry is very clever in producing problems in the guise of so, uh, problems in the guise of solutions. And Big Pharma is as much involved in this mess as, uh, as any other industry. So what's the solution in your mind? Cut out the drugs? 
not just cut out the drugs, and you're right, the big pharma. We actually forbid pharmaceutical salesmen in the Oklahoma City VA. We were one of the top 10% in the country, not just VA, but nationwide hospitals. But, you know, that's a big part of it is keep that out. And don't, you know, if you're going to go to the trouble,